This video is sponsored by Dev Mountain. If you're interested in learning web development, iOS, or UX design, Dev Mountain is a 12 week design and development boot camp intended to get you a full time position in the industry. To learn more, visit devmountain.com or click the link in the description below. Hey, what's going on guys? So I've been really, really busy trying to work on my, my courses, my React course. I have another responsive website course that I'm trying to finish up. So no coding today. I'm just going to go through a list of resources for web developers. Um, and, and what I mean here is not anything that you have to install, not any Chrome extensions or plugins or anything like that. These are all just browser based resources and tools. Uh, that maybe you guys can find useful and I'm sure a lot of you have heard heard of some of these but I put them all into a gist and I'll put the link in the description and I've, I've separated them by category so we're gonna start with generators so a lot of you guys probably know and, and have used this before lipsum.com where um, you can generate dummy text if you're creating like a blog application and you want to see what a post looks like with text instead of just thinking of it on your own or whatever you can just generate paragraphs or words so we'll say generate five paragraphs and it gives us a bunch of text okay so very very simple uh, and if you use Emmet in your text editor you really don't need it because lorem uh, there's a lorem abbreviation where you can create text so favicon generator this is by dynamic drive and this has been around forever i used to use this like a decade ago and you basically can just take any image so we'll go ahead and choose a png image of my logo and then click create icon and it can be a png jpeg gif and it's going to create a 16 by 16 favicon okay so it's going to be an ico file and you can download it and then all you have to do is put this script right in your html and you have a favicon okay and this next one here is mockaroo.com this is one of my favorites on this list because you can generate all types of data um, in all different formats so for instance here we have id first name last name email gender ip address if we want to add another field let's say credit card We'll say credit underscore card and then if we click here we can choose a data type and there's so many different types here i think there's 142 so we're going to grab they even have like car models and stuff like that so we're going to grab credit card and then we can generate up to a thousand rows for free i think if you want more you can actually pay a premium and then the format we have comma separated values json sql uh, firebase custom i'm not sure what that is excel uh, X, xml so a lot of different formats i'm going to choose json and then you can either download the data so you can download a json file or you can preview it and you can see it gives me a thousand rows of data to work with all right so you can import this into your database or just stick it in a file and use it that way and you can do all types of testing with data so very very handy uh, next we have the mobile mock-up generator by mock you phone and what this is is it allow you to take an image and basically put a, a a wrapper around it like an ipad or an iphone or a google pixel so this is great if you if you create like a mobile application and you want to display it on your website you could go down here and you can just pick one of these and then drag your image into this box and it'll kind of create the wrapper around it uh, and it gives you the exact sizes uh, the recommended size that that you should use so that can be pretty handy next we have a logo generator so this is logister.com and if we say create logo for free we'll say traversy media you can put whatever text you want in here and it'll generate some logos and i think that if you want like full high resolution images when you choose a logo i think it is a premium i think you have to pay but i wanted to include it because the logos are actually pretty nice most of these generators they have really crappy little icon logos but these these are nice i actually like these so if you guys want to look more into it you can I, i've never used it but it's just something that i, I find interesting um, this next one is a uuid generator so basically this is just uh it'll generate a uuid either version one or version four and it's just formatted in a certain way and if we if we reload it'll be a different one so if you ever need a, just an id for some reason a uuid you can use that we have a hash generator so this if we type something in like hello it'll give us the sha 256 hash of that word 
um, can be helpful for like passwords and stuff like that. And actually, if you go to the root of this domain, passwordsgenerator.net, you have a generator for secure passwords and you can add all types of rules and stuff like that. All right, so for image resources, we have pexels.com, which is definitely my favorite for just finding, um, you know, high quality stock images for free. And they're just as high quality as if you were to buy them off like iStock Photo or something like that. I love this site. I've used it for since it's since it's been around. So if we click on one of these images here, we can get multiple sizes so we can get like, you know, almost 6000 uh, width almost 4000 uh, what's this yeah height and width and then large is 1920 by 1280 so um, 10 if you want like high quality HD images I usually use this size but you can get smaller medium custom size uh, so it's pretty cool and then you can obviously search for like let's say computer and that'll give us all images with computers and there's quite a bit and then you can also search by color, which is cool. If you go to browse and then photos by color, you can see if you click on the palette here, you get different images based off that color, which is really nice if you have some kind of, you know, theme to your, your UI or your website where you want the, the images to kind of match. So that's Pexels. Uh, another resource for images is unsplash.com, which is really nice as well. It has a similar interface, similar layout and also gives you high quality free images. I don't like it as much as Pexels, but it does have a really nice um, image placeholder service, which I'll show you in a second. And then if you want like PSDs and stuff, we have freepick.com and they have PSDs, vectors, icons. So just different types of images, not just photos. I haven't used this that much, but uh, it looks pretty cool. And then source.unsplash.com is where um, you can basically get just URLs that include high quality images. So you can get them by a user, specific user from a collection, fixed weekly daily photo. What I usually use is a search term. So if you want like, let's say an image with nature and water in it, you would just add this term to it and then you just specify the size you want. You put this right inside your image source tag or your image tag uh, source attribute. And then you can also target specific photos as well with their ID. OK, we actually use this quite a bit in my bootstrap course because I didn't want local images, you know, to download them and all that stuff. So we just use this. And then there's another one called placeholder.com. Same idea. You just stick this in the image source tag. But instead of images, they're just like gray boxes that have the size and you would put the size in the URL like 350 by 150. All right, so just another option for image placeholders. And then for icons, if you're not using a library like Font Awesome or Material Icons, IconFinder.com is really cool for uh, free icons and premium. They always put the premium at the top, but you can see like these ones down here, these are all free. And they have complete sets like flags, world flags, social media, uh, you know, emotion, emoji icons. So there's a lot and you can search. So if you search for like computer, you'll get all the premium at the top, but then these are all free and they're all different um, formats, SVG, PNG, Illustrator, and then all different sizes as well. All right, so that's iconfinder.com. So for code optimization, if you ever want to minify your CSS or JavaScript, there's a lot of sites like this, but I think minifier.org is very simple. Just go ahead and paste it in here, either CSS or JavaScript. Now, if you have a big application or a big website uh, and you have a lot of stuff that you want to minify, a lot of different files, you probably want to work it into your your workflow. So using like a task runner or something like that. So it does it automatically when you compile your code. But if you have a small website with like one or two CSS or JavaScript files, just go ahead and paste it in here, minify it and just just paste it in your in your document. So. Uh, pretty simple. And then this is codebeautify.org, which actually has a lot of different tools. You can see it has a lot of different tools here. The JSON viewer, if I click that, I've already added something in here. I guess it saved it. So it's just a JSON object. Uh, and if we wanted to minify it, we could click minify. OK, so if we wanted to do that, if we wanted to, if we got like, let's say, just a chunk of JSON that wasn't formatted and we could barely read, you could stick it in here and beautify it. OK, so you could go the other way as well. And then it also validates it. So if I 
take away like uh, the quotes here. You see we get an X uh, right away, but I can also click validate and it'll tell me exactly where the issue is. Okay, so you can validate Jason. Uh, let's see, let's put these back. Another thing you could do is uh, convert it to XML. Okay, if you wanted to do that, I don't I haven't used XML in, in years, but you can do that also to CSV. So that's the JSON viewer. Um, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So XML to JSON, hex to decimal, uh, CSS beautifier. This is pretty cool. JSON to Java. I already did this as well. So I just put an object with a name and an age. And then over here, it creates an actual Java class with properties and methods, setter and getter methods. So if you want a quick way to create uh, a JavaScript class with some properties and methods, you can use this. Uh, text minifier. We have all types of formatters for different languages. Ruby, C++, Python, uh, string and number tools, IP tools. Uh, what else? So for colors, if you want like if you want to figure out the RGB value of of a hex color. So this is light gray. If we say convert to RGB, it'll give us the red, green, blue value. So anything like that. And then there's like IP tools. host name to IP. So if we want to look at like google.com and check out the host, the IP address, you'll see it gives us this one. Um, DNS look up if you want to look up like the name servers. We could do that and it should be just NS1 Google. Oh, that's DNS look up. This is name server look up. And I'm not sure why you'd want to do this. I'm just showing you that there's a lot of different things. So you can see all the name servers. So there's a lot of different things. You guys can check this out on your own if you want to look at some of this other stuff. Um, next one is code uh, diff checker dot com, which will just compare blocks of code. And I've actually used this quite a bit when I can't debug. I can't find anything through debugging uh, or just looking at the code. So a lot of times I'll get. Uh, files from a student that is having an issue. And if I can't see if I can't find the problem, I'll just paste it in here. So like we'll say function. And we'll just go ahead and console dot log. Hello. And then most of the time when I when I do find something, when I use this tool, it's usually like a, just a misspelling of something. So let's say we had a thousand, you know, thousands of lines of code and we go and say find the difference. It'll just show us the exact line where the problem is. Okay, and it'll show us, you know, this this is wrong. So that's diff checker. Then for converters, these these are really for learning purposes. Um, let me just get rid of this stuff. I've already done this. So this is the Babel website and Babel is a compiler. It takes late, you know, ES6, ES7, the, the latest features of JavaScript compiles it down to old ES5 code. So if we do like uh, const, const hello and set it to anything one over here, it's going to compile. Oops, get rid of that dot. It's going to compile into var hello because var is ES5. Okay, it's the equivalent to constant ES5. And if we put like an arrow function here, if we go like that and we'll just say console dot log. Oops. Console dot log one. And over here you can see there's no arrow function. It's just var hello equals function. All right, so they will it'll just take any ES6 plus and uh, it will convert it. And then also over here, you can check the different presets um, because Babel uses presets and React is one of the ones that are checked. So we can actually convert JSX, which is JavaScript syntax extension. It's what React uses to display uh, markup. So if we put like div and in JSX, you can't use class, you use class name. So we'll say class name app and then div. And then in here we'll just put an H1 and we'll say hello. like that. And then it's going to give us the equivalent in JavaScript. Okay, so this is the JSX. This is the JavaScript. And what what would happen is you'd call react the react object and then create element. 
the type of element you want to create, which is a div, this first div. Next would be parameters or properties, in this case, a class name. And then we have an, an H1 inside that div, so we'd have to create another element of H1. There's no properties or attributes, so we'd have null for the second value. And then the last value is the content that's inside. So we'd have to keep doing this. So you can see why JSX is basically needed for React. I mean, you could write it all like this, but I don't know why, why in the hell anyone would. And we actually use this in my React course that I have coming up that I'm working on now. Uh, so that's Babel. That's the Babel REPL. And then we also have this SAS Meister if you want to experiment with SAS a little bit. Again, let me just get rid of this. Looks like everything I did earlier for testing is cached. So if we want to create a uh, variable in SAS, we use a money sign and we can say like color equals blue. And then down here, we'll put in a body element and we'll say that we want the color to be that variable. So color. And then over here, it should it should uh, compile. What's did I do something wrong here? Root style sheet. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, I you know what? I put an equal sign. <laughs> it should be colon blue. There we go. So now it should compile and you can see we just get the standard CSS. All right. So if you want to experience experiment with SAS, Um, sasmeister.com is a good place to do that. And we also have web web toolkit online.com which has the same thing for less. If you go over here, you see less to CSS. There's also a bunch of other stuff that there's there's a minifier here for different languages and stuff like that. Lorem ipsum generator. This has a lot of tools as well. But for for less, if we want to set a variable, we can say color and set that to red and in less you use the at symbol for a variable. So body and I hate using these crappy editors so we could say like color and we want it to be the variable of color and we just click convert and then it gives us the the CSS for some reason it gives you the hex value instead of what you the color you put but that's fine whatever so that's for less next we have uh, stack edit dot IO. which is a markdown editor. Let's just get rid of that. So for this, we can just type in markdown. So for instance, uh, if we want an H1, we can put a number sign and say hello. And I do have a markdown crash course on my channel if you guys are interested. If we want an H2, we can say hello. If we want a list, we can put in an asterisk for each item like that. Uh, if we want a link, we can go ahead and say like Traverse Media and then some parentheses. that so that'll give us a link and then you also have like these tools up here if you want to bold something and you don't want to use the double asterisk you don't want to put it in manually you can just hover it and click bold and it'll add the double asterisk on each side to make it bold and mark down so it's it's pretty cool you can save files as well um, i usually use a vs code extension to do to do markdown and preview but this this is a nice little browser tool So next we have the Jade converter. Now, if you don't know what Jade is, it's actually known as Pug now, and it's a template engine. It's often used with Node.js and Express um, for server-side rendering, but the way that it's formatted over here, you can see this is the Jade or Pug code, and it doesn't use actual HTML tags. This is the HTML equivalent, so it works on indentation. If you want the head to be inside HTML, you just put an indent. You want the title and the head, you put an indent and then uh, attributes, for instance, type on the script tag would be in parentheses. So this is a, a nice little converter to uh, if you have a block of HTML and you're working on a site where you have to use pug. Uh, God forbid, I hate as I hate it. I hate it. But if you need to, you can paste the HTML in here and get the equivalent in pug or Jade. And I, I just don't like it. I don't I some people do. Some people like this syntax and they like uh, like stylus, uh, the CSS preprocessor or using dot sass instead of dot scss where you use this type of syntax for CSS as well. Uh, but I personally don't like it. So for image compression, we have a couple options. This is compressor dot IO. 
I love the interface of this website. So basically you can just drag a, an image in here, JPEG or PNG, and we or we can just select it. So I'm going to grab the last thumbnail uh, for my last video and very quickly it's going to compress it and tell you how much it saved. It saved a 69%. So it was 314 kilobytes before. Now it's 98. point thirty nine and what I think is really cool is this that you can actually see on the right is the compressed image on the left is the original so you can kind of match the quality and you can see there's virtually no difference between the smaller files so you should definitely compress your images and I'm being kind of a hypocrite saying that because that's the biggest problem with my personal website is I haven't compressed the images and it just it slows down the load time a lot. It's just something I haven't got gotten to yet, which is a little embarrassing because it's pretty easy to do. Uh, but yeah, this will compress your images. You can download the file. You can save it to Google. You can save it to Dropbox. Sorry about that friggin crow outside if you can hear him friggin barking. But that's compressor dot IO. Now we have uh, JPEG optimizer, which is really nice for JPEGs. I believe you can only use JPEGs here. Hold on, guys. Let me shut that window. Thing is loud. I'll probably still be able to hear him, but quiet him down a little bit. So JPEG optimizer, you can up grab a file. So we'll grab the same one. You can choose the compression level. So zero through ninety nine. Uh, resize photo if you want to resize it. So we'll say 400 pixels. Now this is going to make the file size very small because we're also resizing it. But let's go ahead and click optimize. And then you can see we have saved 94.2 percent. So it started as 307 and it ended as 17 kilobytes, which is uh, a lot. But it also resized it down to 400 pixels. Okay, so and the original was 1280. So that's that. Um, now we have for PNG images is tiny PNG and I believe you can also do JPEG as well. Yeah, you can also do JPEG. So let's grab uh, the same JPEG and it'll go through its little process, throw some confetti up and it gave us a 74 percent saving. So it saved us 232 kilobytes. It ended at 82 kilobytes, which is, which is a little bit under what the compress dot io site gave us. All right. So there's a lot more. Those are just the ones that I've used um, for this validation and compatibility. If you want to validate your HTML and CSS, you can use the W3C website, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know of. So if you put an address in here like traversymedia.com and you'll see that I don't have any HTML errors. But if we put like, let's say uh, let's do Google. dot com and most of the errors and warnings are just stupid things. A lot of them I don't even understand. Um, so this has to do with like uh, UTF with encoding. Uh, yeah, another thing with encoding. So let's see display in line box is not a display value. I think they meant in line block. <laughs> The BG color attribute while wow, they're using BG color, it says use CSS instead. So it just gives you um, not really errors like it's nothing that's going to break your site, but just little tips just to kind of make it, you know, optimize it in, in the best way possible. And then on the other hand, if you want to do CSS, I mean, that's HTML, but it was validating the inline CSS. If you want to do just CSS, you can go to jigsaw dot W3 dot org slash CSS validator. And when I check my site, what I find is mostly unknown this unknown vendor extension. It has to do with the vendor extensions and they're all in the, the files, CSS files for like plugins that I use um, in like libraries like Font Awesome. So you can see this stuff's from Font Awesome. This stuff is from Bootstrap and it's all this unknown vendor extension, which is not is not important to me. Um, but you can go ahead and search, you know, any site you want and find find warnings and errors. So this here, can I use dot com is very popular. I'm sure a lot of you guys have used this. If you want to find out the browser compatibility for a certain feature, like let's say uh, grid CSS or see, I always say grid CSS, but CSS grid. And you can see that the green is supported. The light green is partially supported. So IE 11, it's partially supported. with the prefix and then red obviously means that it's not supported. 
which Opera Mini it's not. Um, and then you can also see any known issues, okay, resources. You can also send feedback if you want. So it's pretty cool. So if we search for like uh, service workers and we can see that IE11 does not support service workers or Opera Mini, which doesn't seem to support anything. Um, and then, you know, all of the last whatever number of versions of Chrome have supported it. So, you know, background sync API. So that uh, provides one off Paris synchronization for service workers. So this feature is looks like it's only available in Chrome. Um, I'm not sure what yellow is. What is yellow? Oh, 50%. Okay, so all right, so I guess yellow is 50%. Um, you could search for like the fetch API, which you can see is in all browsers except IE. Friggin IE. Biggest uh, disappointment in, in web development history. All right, so next thing we have the Kangax table for ECMAScript. So this just it kind of is, is similar to what we just looked at, except you don't type things in and it just shows features of JavaScript. So this is all ES6 stuff. So like the spread operator, you can see uh, is supported in all these browsers, except IE, of course. Um, and it's not just browsers. So these are all browsers. This is polyfills. So like Babel, uh, Clojure for TypeScript, it'll show you ES6 shim. And then over here we have like servers and runtimes like Node.js. So if this stuff is, um, you know, available on Node.js. So this is ES6. You also have ES5, which should be all green, really, except this Duke thing. I don't even know what that is. And then 2016 plus. So things like uh, generator functions, async functions. Um, then we have ES next, which is the absolute like latest stuff that is not it's not finalized or even near finalized. So everything is basically red here. Uh, it's all experimental and stuff like that. So it's a nice chart to, to check uh, JavaScript um, compatibility. All right. So in browser coding, I'm sure a lot of you guys have used stuff like code pen. This is really cool. If we search for like, um, I don't know, let's say landing page just to give you a project example. I think I come up here somewhere. Oh, no. That's all right. Let's use this one here. So basically you can do anything, anything that's just client side HTML, CSS, JavaScript you can do here. Um, so you can see they have actually this looks like it's using what is this using react. So if you go to settings and you go to either CSS or JavaScript, it shows. Yeah, they're using react here. So you actually can use react and other scripts in here as well. You can use libraries, jQuery, stuff like that. You just include it in here. They even have like preprocessors like Babel, um, CoffeeScript, which I don't think anyone uses anymore, TypeScript. Um, and then if we go to CSS, you can include things like Bootstrap, Font Awesome, stuff like that. You can also provide uh, a CSS normalized file, a reset. Uh, HTML, you can use a preprocessor like Pug <laughs> again, which I hate. You can use Markdown. CodePen is definitely my favorite one of, of these types of sites because there's actually there's a lot of them. I like how it's set up, how you can, you know, make this bigger and make that bigger. So uh, I put a lot of my my uh, sample code from my videos on CodePen. If you guys a lot of you guys probably know that if we go to my um, let me see. Can I search for? I'm not logged in, so let's see. Traversy. Uh, let's see. And so this guy here, Sh 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 I can't say his name. Sh Shora, Shayura, Shabam. He made a tribute page to me, which I just found yesterday when I was looking at this, and. Uh, that's really flattering. He put like a picture of me and my my son and my daughter. So thank you to you, man. That's that's pretty cool. I really appreciate that. Yeah, amazing person. Help has helped greatly in learning web development. Thanks, man. I really appreciate that if you're watching. Uh, but some other stuff. Let's see. Must have this here. So this is my code pen. 
right here. So they have this project as like the, the, the big one and then some other ones. And it shows the views and people can like followers of 352 followers. So I really like CodePen. It's it's a great resource. And then you have JS Fiddle, which is pretty cool. I use this. Well, I don't really use this anymore, but it's used a lot for JavaScript examples. Not not so much full projects like CodePen, but more for like testing JavaScript. So you put your HTML over here and your CSS here, JavaScript down here, and you have to run it, which I don't like. It doesn't just um, it's not completely like auto refresh. You have to actually run it. But um, it's it's all right. And then Liveweave is another one that I found that I don't really use. Um, some people tend to like it. So it's similar to JS Fiddle, but you can add like uh, what's this? You have a CSS Explorer where you can change like properties and stuff over here in the GUI. Uh, I don't really know how to do it. I haven't used it, but it is another another resource for writing code in the browser. And co I don't have it on here, but Cloud9 is really cool as well. It's basically a full IDE in the browser. And then this right here I find interesting, this REPL.IT, which if you want to write like Python or Node.js and stuff, if you want an environment to, to do that stuff, this gives it to you. So um, I think I do have an account. Actually, let me just log in with like Facebook. Oh, I'm not logged into Facebook. All right, let's log in with Google. So if we say start coding now and you can choose like Django Express uh, Node.js, so just like an empty Node.js environment, let's grab let's grab Express. And it gives you like uh, like just a standard Express server. You can bring modules in like body parser. Looks like they're using SQL Lite here for a database and just running the server. And you can see over here uh, it actually is it running run the REPL. So I, I actually just discovered this, but I'm definitely going to look into this. So if I click restart, so server started. And hello Express app. So it's just putting out this route. If we put another route in here, like let's say slash test and we go down here and say testing and save and then restart. If we go over here, can we I don't think you can edit this, but if you click on this right here, it actually opens your application in a new tab. So if we go to this URL slash test, <clears throat> excuse me, we get testing. OK, so you can actually create node applications, uh, Django applications right in the browser. So this is this is something that that I find really cool and um, We'll look into it some more. I just I just stumbled upon it. So I'm going to log out of that. All right. So for snippet tools, we have GitHub GIS, which I'm actually in. This is this is a GitHub GIS. It's used where you, you can create. Um, actually, let me just go to the URL so you can create different GIS of different file types. <coughs> Excuse me. So if you put like dot JS or .php, it'll give you automatic syntax highlighting. This particular file is a markdown file. Since I did .md, I can just I can use markdown here to create uh, links and lists and headings and stuff like that. So that's definitely uh, what I use for like public snippets. And then you also have pastebin, which um, you can just you can create these things called pastes, which are basically just just snippets of whatever. In this case, he has like a bunch of uh, this looks like a host file or something. But um, yeah, you can save you can make them public or private. API, so it has its own API as well, which actually. Actually, I may do a video on this using this API. But anyway, it's, it's a place to store code and just different snippets. So color and design, if you want to figure out a, a, a design scheme, this hailpixel.com is pretty cool. If I just drag around the mouse, it'll change all different colors. Let's say I like this green here. I'll click and it'll put it to the side. Then I can find another color like let's say this green click. We'll get another side and we want maybe a dark green. And then maybe we want like, I don't know. Like a brownish. And then we have all the different hex values for it. 
So let's see what's the setting so we can change RGB values, HSL values, and we can figure out a, a color scheme for our website or whatever. And then we can implement that into into our CSS. So that's a, that's a pretty cool tool. Uh, get color schemes of websites. So this is style 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 of com. Basically, you can put a URL in here like let's put um, we'll just put my website. So I'll say Traversy Media dot com. and stylify me and what it's going to do is it's going to get all the color schemes of that website and give them to you. So if you like the look of a site and you want to get all the colors, all the values from it, it'll give you those. It'll give you all these hex values. It'll also give you some typography stuff, uh image dimensions, stuff like that. I don't know what the hell why this looks like this. Uh that must be like the big background image or something. Um, so you can get like any color scheme if we do, let's say Facebook, we all know the Facebook colors. And there we go. So we have like the Facebook blue, the white, gray, stuff like that. So just it's just a cool resource. If you if you like a site and you want to kind of see what what scheme color schemes are using um, UI gradients <clears throat> dot com. If you want to generate CSS gradients. You can kind of scroll through these if you like any of them. And you can also say show all gradients and there's just a ton of them to choose from. And if you like one, you can go ahead and click on. Uh, let's see, you can get a JPEG, which is cool. So you can make it an image if you want or you can get the CSS. So you could just grab this. It has the prefix and all that stuff and it'll give you that gradient. Okay. And you can put that on in your background of your website or whatever. So CSS button generator. Uh, I don't use this. I don't really like the look of the buttons, but I guess I mean, I guess you can change them up. You can change like the size, the colors, um, the font, stuff like that. Let's see box. You can add like box shadow border. So border radius, if we wanted it not to have any curves, we could do that and it generates the code down here. So instead of you having to type it all out and stuff, you can design it here and then get the code. All right. So this is a HTML entity lookup. I didn't really know what what other category to put this in. But if you want like a copyright, if we search for copy, you'll see it'll give us the entity value, which is this right here uh, also gives you the entity number. But even if we just put C in, it'll just go out and search for things. So if you want to send symbol, any symbol you want that's available with HTML entities, you can easily look up here. All right. So responsiveness, there's actually a lot of sites like this, but this is one of them response nader where you can put in a URL. And it'll show inside here so you can see what your site looks like. response in in on a sm on a device on a mobile device. Um, I believe we can change. How do we change the? Uh, how do we change the device? I know that there's a way to. Well, maybe we can't. Maybe you have to log in. I could have swore you can change it to like an iPad and stuff like that. But you don't I mean, you don't really need this with Google Chrome tools. If I just go to Traversy Media dot com and go to my Chrome tools and click on right here, we kind of get that functionality anyways. So iPad, let's say iPhone X. So it kind of gives us that functionality anyway. It just doesn't give us that the wrapper around it and we can change it to landscape or portrait. So Chrome tools does a lot of a lot of stuff. I do have a crash course on Google Chrome tools if you want to check that out. Uh, what's my browser size? If you want to know, you know what size your browser is at, this is the current width and height of mine. If I go ahead and change it, you'll see the bottom number is the width. So that's going to go ahead and change. Uh, so it's just another simple tool and you could create that very, very easily. Wireframing. I personally don't use either of these, but these are some free um, online wireframe tools. This one's pretty cool. App dot mockups with a Q dot com. And you can have like little text boxes and different shapes and stuff, different icons. Uh, There's templates. You can create all different pages. 
SVG. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here. This is a, a pretty intuitive uh, interface or not intuitive, but uh, just has a lot of stuff. But uh, like I said, I haven't really used this. And then this other one here, wireframe.cc is very, very simple from what I can tell. Um, so you can just create like different blocks. You know, if you if just whoop, why isn't that staying? Oh, I'll just click the box. So that'll create a box. So if you want to just kind of sketch out like what you want as far as your layout, it has a grid background so you can align things properly. You know, it's not the coolest thing in the world, but it is free and it is something you don't even have to sign up for. You can and you can save your your mock your mockups and stuff like that. But it's just a tool that maybe some of you guys can use. So speed test. Website speed test. Uh, it'll show you the different time uh, load times for different areas. Um, this will be embarrassing, but we'll go ahead and do mine. And, and the whole reason my site is so slow is because of image compression. I haven't I just haven't gotten to it yet. But we'll go ahead and do that. And then we're, we're saying location, New York. And you can see the times here. So 257 milliseconds and then all the different files as well. So I, I have some major optimization to do on my site. I just needed something up really quick just to show my courses. It's not like a site where it, it's not the most important thing in the world. Uh, my content is my YouTube, my my Udemy courses. That's that's the stuff I focus on. But I do need to make my website a little more optimized. Uh, Ping Dom speed test, just another one. So this one you can you can do you can test out speeds and you can sign up and you can get more functionality as well. I think you can pay for more functionality. And then down here, this is a really cool resource. This is a uh, public APIs and I actually get a lot of ideas for projects from here. There's all different categories and this is just a GitHub page. Uh, but there's all different categories that show you the different APIs and, and kind of what they do shows you if you need auth, if you need an API key to use it, uh, if it's HTTPS, if it if it has cross site compatibility. So of course is enabled um, and then it has a link to the documentation of that API. So like even icon finder has its own API. What was the last one I did that uh, I found on here? There was one. Was it Pixabay? Did I find that here? Yeah, right here, Pixabay. So this is actually when I did that React and Pixabay video, I got that idea from here and you just click go and it takes you to the API page. So if you're thinking if you're having problems coming up with projects and you know how to just make simple HTTP requests, whether it's with, you know, fetch or if it's with Axios or if you want to do React or if you're using Angular, the HTTP client, use some of these APIs and, and build projects. Uh, this is just a, a really awesome resource. All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it. If you have any other tools or resources like this and you, you want to share them, maybe I can put them in here. Just nothing, no like learning websites or anything like that. I'm going to do a separate video for that, like tutorials and websites with stuff like that. But tools uh, and then, you know, I guess other image resources, if you guys use something else, things that will quickly optimize your code, just just quick little things. Um, repls in the edit in the browser stuff like that so that's it hopefully you guys enjoyed this little video um, you know I'm gonna I'm trying to finish my react course and I'm also working on a responsive web design with SAS course and those should be done um, pretty soon but that's it for this video guys I will see you next time